This woman who we'll call Shanti is a domestic worker in this house. Shanti is not her real name. She does not want her identity revealed. Aryan! Job nahi, job nahi mil raha hai, isliye aa rahe. Kitna sab padhi likhi hai, isse hi baithe hai. Shanti says even though she's treated well here, the loneliness can be overwhelming. It's a new country. It's a new place. So imagine, I mean, coming to a brand new place, a brand new world. The only relative she has is a brother over here, and she and who's in New York. So you know, coming to a new place, and I, I, I wouldn't know what to expect. You see, for all you know, we might be murderers. You know, I don't know what we might do to her. So easy behind closed doors to do God knows what. A suburban New York couple has been found guilty in what's being called a modern-day slavery case. Mahinda and Varsha Sadnani arriving at court in New York to hear their fate. They held two Indonesian housekeepers as virtual slaves. The victims testified they were beaten with brooms and umbrellas and slashed with knives. When we walked in with the arrest warrants, um, the Sadnani attitude was they were above everyone. She was known only as Samira. Take a look at her. The scars on her face. You're gonna see her arms, the rest of the body. This is five years worth of beatings. Samira was 51 years old. She worked as a maid for Varsha and Mahinder Sabnani, who made their fortune in the perfume business. The couple paid her way from Indonesia in 2002. Three years later, they brought another Indonesian maid into their home, 37-year-old Inang. Samira and Inang found themselves enslaved. They starved, wore rags, and worked endlessly. Some days you got the beating, some days you got a combination of everything, and some days you got pinched and your ears pulled. It just depended on what Varsha's mood for the day was. This actually goes on in the United States that we do have slaves that we do have beatings, and we do inhuman things to other human beings. Shaku came to the United States to work for a Bangladeshi diplomat in 1997. Her passport was seized the day she arrived. The treating looked like, um, inside you look like, what do I do like that? All that I'm thinking, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do? The people all the I'm crying alone and the sitting in the kitchen and I'm crying. You know? When inside it you don't see in the outside. And they outside people come in and it's good the people. So what I do this so so difficult. I live here, I never go out. I don't see my son, I, I don't talk to it, my son. You know, it's difficult like that. People should be free of fear. They they work for everything. They work for everything but very little money. That's why they feel like, oh, this is the work, it's a dirty work. These are women of color. These are immigrant women from developing countries. Just like they were black women, many of them are still black women or are brown women, and they're coming here and they're facing an unequal kind of treatment based upon where, who they are and where they're from and what is the legacy of their profession. God's calling me in anger long stay. It's a legacy no, rooted in the aftermath of American slavery. Like when federal laws to protect stay. workers were passed in the Goodbye, 1930s, domestic workers, stay. many of whom were African Americans, were excluded. The kind of compromise that was reached was that we will exempt domestic workers and agricultural workers from the protections of the National Labor Relations Act this compromise was animated purely by racial bias and, and explicit racism because at the time, domestic workers were again descendants of house slaves. Fast forward now to the present, who comprises domestic workers and who comprises agricultural workers? Domestic workers are overwhelmingly women from South Asia, from the Caribbean, from Latin America, from other parts of the developing world, again, women of color. So at the outset, we're dealing with historic and contemporary racism at its root. 
federal laws still do little to protect domestic workers. Domestic workers are not included in anti-discrimination laws because their workplaces are too small. The National Labor Relations Act, which guarantees employees the right to organize, excludes domestic workers. The Fair Labor Standards Act sets a federal minimum wage rate, maximum hours and overtime, but it exempts babysitters. And OSHA laws apply only to employers with 15 or more employees. That excludes many domestic workers from health and safety protections. You basically are creating a group of people who are disposable property, commodities, and who have none of the rights that other workers presumably would have of freedom of employment.